G'day, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab. And today, my good friends at ZJ Benny sent me, hmm, a lovely little box. A kind of care package. Well, let's call it a care package for my EV. This is a EVSE from ZJ Benny. EVSE, electric vehicle supply equipment, but look, you guys are probably gonna call it an EV charger. Effectively, it's a power supply for your electric vehicle to use its inboard or onboard charger to charge your car. But you're probably more familiar for those who do solar, ZJ Benny make these DC isolators. They're really common, really popular, meet all the Australian standards and the New Zealand standards for DC isolators. But ZJ Benny actually make a whole range of equipment. Why I'm excited about this unit here is because it's got OCPP, Open Charge Point Protocol. OCPP is kind of like making something that's just an electrical outlet basically because that's all EVSEs are with a, a few special pins uh, for what we call pilot pins but um, adding OCPP functionality uh, which means that you can turn this into a smart charger. It can talk to other equipment uh, such as inverters, um, CTs, you name it, apps, um, and there's apps like Charge HQ, for instance, which integrate with this particular product from ZJ Benny. So let's get into the box and find out what it looks like. Okay, <laughs> well there it all is. Um, now, this is the first time I've seen this product, so totally unprepared for any of its features other than I know it's got OCPP and it's made by CJ Benny. Uh, it comes with a Type 2 cable. Now, for home charging, that's a real plus. You can buy these cables as an extra item for units which you often find in public places which just have an, a socket that you can connect to, a Type 2 socket, but um, you know, it's going to cost you a lot just for the cable. So this has got the cable already uh, attached. So let's have a look inside. Now Type 2 is in Australia and New Zealand really the, the predominant, in fact almost the universal um, connection because there, there is another type of plug called Chardamo, C-H-A-D-M-O. Chardamo, uh, really only Nissan, Leaf and, and Zoe I think use them, they're pretty uncommon uh, and uh, you could say the plug wars are over. Type 2 uh, has won the, the game. So you'll notice it's got quite a lot of pins on here. This is actually a potentially a three phase supply or a single phase, just depends which pins are activated. So it's got uh, potentially three actives in a neutral. The two little pins are called pilot pins. They're communication pins with the vehicle. They do some really clever stuff. They, when you plug this into your vehicle, uh, for a start it's a proximity sensor, one of the pins, and it goes, okay, um, there's a plug plugged into the EV. I think I'll lock my plug so it can't be pulled out under load. So it's safety. Also, it tells the vehicle that it's connected by cable and you can't just drive off and rip the whole thing off the wall. So one of those pins is all about safety. The other pin is actually measuring, it's rather clever, it measures a, a resistance on a circuit and determines the maximum um, uh, charge that this equipment can supply, or I should say the maximum amount of current this equipment can supply to the vehicle. So uh, the vehicle can't overload your equipment. So those two pins are really vital for the performance of the system. Now, put the little cap on, that's just to keep it nice and dry. Um, We've got some accessories and some manuals, so I'm gonna need those today because uh, me and my electrician are gonna be installing this unit. Now I can see in here straight away, uh, we have a data cable. That's to do with the OCPP, so that you can communicate uh, with external devices. And we've got a mounting plate, okay, to go on the wall. That's pretty nice. And uh, we've got some wall plugs, love these. I always call these lolly bags. And we've got some glands, uh, so glands and a blanking plug uh, to weatherproof the unit. And there's a nice little template here, so you can uh, attach this to the wall and it's got some drill points so that you get your wall plugs in exactly the right spot. And uh, we've got the manuals for the uh, various functionalities of the unit. 
and there's an installation manual. So definitely gonna be needing that one today. Well, let's uh, take the cover off this unit. I'll put these away. Wow, now that's a very stylish looking piece of equipment. Look at that, beautiful. So there's, there's two sort of parts here. Um, this is the bit that you look at, but this is the electrical connections that are gonna go on the wall. So uh, here we've got our uh, three phases and neutral and earth. So uh, I noticed that these are the uh, uh, terminals along the bottom here that we can bring our wiring into and this unit then sits, I imagine, here we go, and it looks like there's some little blanking points here, which I'm guessing are actually in the accessories box, so let's have a look at here, ah yes, All right, so this is where the magic happens, alright, RFID cards, wow, so you can tap to charge. So I imagine that's so that you can uh, lock it so basically only people with RFID cards can charge, but I imagine it's programmable to be open to anyone. And here is our DLB box. Now, got to learn about what that's for. I imagine that's once again to do with the communication. We've got some CTs because these CTs, three of them, one for each phase, uh, allow this piece of equipment to be aware of any uh, generation uh, or consumption on site. Now, one of the things that you may have to do, which is if there is uh, a limited capacity in your switchboard, let's say you can't supply 32 amps, you can only supply 25 amps. Um, these CTs can sort of measure at the point of connection the maximum supply that you're rated for and limit the amount of power that this unit can supply to the vehicle. So. Uh, these CTs can do various things. We'll find out more about them once we install them uh, on the side of the house. Uh, on the side here, we've got an emergency switch by the look of it, and we've got some information. So it says on the side that this is a 22 kilowatt EVSE. Now I'm using the correct term, electric vehicle supply equipment, but I know, everyone calls them chargers. So this is a 22 kilowatt charger. That doesn't mean that when you plug this into your car that it's gonna charge your car at 22 kilowatts. Remember what I said at the beginning? That's actually the vehicle has the AC to DC conversion device, the charger in it. So most cars these days are around the, either 7.4 single phase, 11 kilowatt, three phase, and there's a very few that can do the full 22 kilowatts three phase. So it depends on uh, whether you have a single phase at home or three phase uh, at home or wherever you're installing this unit will determine its peak power delivery. But certainly from single phase, uh, it's probably only going to be 7.4 kilowatts. So this is uh, maximum uh, input is 32 amps and it says maximum output is 32 amps. Remember, it's just a socket outlet basically supplying uh, AC power to your home and it's IP65. Now that basically means it can go out in the weather. Um, you probably want to put it just a little bit protected from direct sunlight so it's not going to be degraded by UV, but uh, I'm sure this is rated for outside installation. Now this unit, um, it's still written on the side here, OCPP 1.6J. Now there's a couple of iterations of OCPP and it says with 4G, wow. Okay, wasn't expecting that. So it sounds like there's even a bit more smarts to this than I was aware of. So we'll find out more about that once we install it. And uh, it's suitable for both 50 and 60 hertz applications. So North America, uh, uh, 60 hertz, Australia, New Zealand, 50 hertz. And it's uh, got a rated output voltage of 400 volts. Now, if you have three phase, uh, your phase to phase voltage is typically 400, maybe 415. Uh, but if you're single phase, it's gonna be 230, 240 volts. So there you go. That's the ZJ Benny EVSE with OCPP. I'm really excited. Let's get it on a wall. <laughs>